Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's time once again for Closing the Wealth Gap. The one show, maybe the only show that shows you how to close the wealth gap in your own life with the man who's done it for many, our wealth coach himself, Tyrone French. Hey, Tyrone. Hey, welcome everybody to this edition of Closing the Wealth Gap. I'm your host, Tyrone French, where we talk about creating ordinary wealth for everyday people. And my co-host, uh, couldn't do it without him, Mr. Paul Roberts. Uh, Paul, take a bow. <laughs> your, your loyal student, oh great uh, sensei. <laughs> man, I tell you, man, you're just such an inspiration to me and, and the, the conversations that we have, it's almost like we should be recording co our conversation 24 seven. I feel like that's because what we do anyway. We get off on these things and, and one thing leads to another. And then I say something and then you go, oh, wow. And then that sparks me. And then I, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a perfect example of why people should tune into the show. It really is a thoughtful conversation. It's not an infomercial. Well, our listeners, they, they enjoy the emails and the feedback that we get. <laughs> and, you know, they, 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 Paul, they love you. They Sometimes they just wish I'd shut up you, though. So. I don't understand, but I get so <laughs> frustrated or so excited one or the other. <laughs> hey, you know what, but we, uh, the show topic, uh, the, our listeners don't realize this, but you know, we were going to do a certain show today and it, it kind of pivoted on the last minute because the New York came out with an article the other day Yeah, and they were talking about the consumer price index in May had risen, um, you know, 5%, 5%. And done that I know, yeah. I know that the everyday consumer doesn't really give a crap about what those numbers mean in those articles stuff but when you go to the gas station and you see that you're paying more for gas when you go to the supermarket and see that you're paying more for groceries then those articles begin to make sense they're their warnings they're telling you you have to you better prepare because in the future things are going to be so expensive whereas you're either going to continue to go forward financially or you're going to go backwards. You are not going to remain the same. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example, Paul. I was uh, in the supermarket the other day and I normally, I'm a type of guy, if I go shopping, I know exactly what I want. Me I too. don't dilly dally in the, in, the, in the store. I go in and get a one to come out. Yep. And I got a pretty good pattern and habits based on what I like and what I don't like. So, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I got a pretty good estimate as far as what I'm going to spend when I go in there. And a lot of times this is just me. This is not family, you know, shopping and all. This is just me as far as, you know, my pantry and, and, you know, certain things yeah. that I want that I like. Right. So I, I you know, I, I budget get your Cheerios, I, I, get I, your I, uh, uh, cookies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I got, I, I, I budget myself about 90 bucks to do that, you know, mm -hmm. and it says, you know, this, it's no sweat. It's it, the money is there to do that as far as that in the budget to do it, you know? And so, you know, and when I get to the counter, uh, I don't think about, I don't look at what's being rang up. I don't look at the prices. I don't look at any of that stuff. I just, I have a, normally have a conversation with the, with the checkout person, the cashier. I have a, a conversation with the person behind me or, or in front of me. And that's just normally when I go to the store, that's pretty much what I do. And I meet people and we're laughing and talking and everything. And I get my receipt, I throw in a bag and I, I go home and I, you know, put the stuff up. Well, uh, a couple of days ago, um, or about a week ago, uh, I, you know, putting the stuff up, I happen to just glance at the receipt because I keep all of my receipts. And I glanced at the receipt and I saw it said 147 bucks. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, wow, she overcharged me. In our conversation, she overcharged me for something. So I went back, I looked at the items and everything. It's like, nope, she didn't, she didn't overcharge me. The stuff is just more expensive. I now. overpaid. <laughs> yeah, I thought I overpaid, but no, she charged me based on what those prices were that day. And I went from my budget for as far as junk being $90 to... $147. Now for me, I can absorb that. No big deal. Doesn't, doesn't even matter. But I was thinking how the average consumer now will just go to the gas station now to, to pump their gas. And they're asking for, you know, some people, uh, especially uh, from in my neighborhood, sometimes that they, they, you know, you're going to get, you know, you're not going to fill up the tank. They may get $20 worth of gas, wow. you know, or $30 worth of gas. Because that's all they got. Just, 
that's all they have. And they're trying to get from point A to point B or just have, you got enough gas for a couple of days to do what you need to do. Well, I, for me, I, when I stop and get gas, I fill my tank up. That's just, you know, that's, that's my ordinary routine. I just fill up the tank. But now you look at that tank and you're, you're spending more money per tank. And like I said, Paul, for the people that understand finance and understand generational wealth or they understand cash flow, it's not a problem because our income is increasing to meet that demand. To keep pace as far with as the, rising the inflation, inflation, right? Right. If, if things but cost more, you make person, more. <clears throat> you, things cost more, you make more. But because wages have been stymied and they're still debating on their, their flatlining, the people are falling further and further behind. And I tell you what, I, I, um, I did an article the other day. Uh, or oh, I did a post on Facebook mm -hmm. and it was, you know, again, not against us, but not against the GOP. I'm not against the Democrats in this issue. Um, it was something where they, they didn't pass the, uh, it was a fairness. Uh, 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 I can't remember the name of it. I can, I can pull it up on my phone, but it was, uh, they were, t they were trying to pass a bill as far as equal pay, as far as men and women. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was a fairness, whatever. I, I, it's on my phone. I can They've bring tried it up. that a couple I, I times. They've had a couple of didn't bills. Didn't plan on talking about that right now. But yeah, they were talking about the, um, you know, just fair wages for for women. You know, women do the same job, but they make less money. Always have. And the thing is, women tend to live. And, and these are men, predominantly. The majority are men making these decisions. Whereas women tend to live longer than men. So their money needs to last a lot longer. Mm -hmm. They tend to be uh, anchors between their parents and their kids. So they're helping their parents and they're helping their kids with a finite amount of money. Fixed amount. And because they're not making the same thing as a man would make, they have less money going into their retirement plans. And so I, again, I, I put this, I, there was an article and he was talking about how it, it didn't go through the Senate. And I, I, I put, uh, put the article on Facebook and I was like, you know, this is just wrong. And I had a troll that, that popped on there and started talk spewing all this garbage, uh, about liberal, the liberal agenda and the, and the, uh, the deficit and blah, blah, blah. And then lo and behold, the next day, the New York Life, uh, the New York Times wrote this, uh, come out with this article about the consumer price index uh, increasing. And it just, and I put, for that troll, I put that article right behind hmm. that decision not to increase the pay for the women. Why? Because they need the money. They need that money. That We need that money to circulate in the economy. And we talk about this divide based on the wealth gap. Well, it's really... It's really like a race. It's really like going around a, a track. And so if, if you are in a position where you understand, you're accustomed to having wealth and you, you, know, you, you understand a trust fund, you understand uh, income producing assets, you're just, you're just you know, you, it, you, it's a cakewalk around the track because your reserves, you don't worry about not having enough because your reserves are, are generating more dollars, more income. Whereas if you're just running flat out around a track just to make ends meet, you, you tend to burn yourself out. Mm -hmm. And so now you're tired and you can't really compete with the people that have the will. That doesn't help. Tired person doesn't make more money. Let me give you a quick analogy my father taught me many years ago. I don't think he was thinking of inflation at the time, but his theory was life in general. Everybody wants to stand still. You get someplace you like, I'm happy. Stop right here in your job, in your life, in your house, in your income, whatever. I'm happy. I'm at my happy spot. And he said, life is like a parade. He said, it either runs over you, passes you by, or leaves you behind. But you can't stand still. Can't stand still. Yeah, and and the, the tragedy now is, um, you know, I, I, there was a, um, a a quote, a relative of mine put this quote on on Facebook. I love her to death. I didn't have a I didn't have a chance to have the conversation with her that I want to have, but the 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 term was my health is my wealth. Right. And a lot of people believe that. I mean, it sounds really really good, 
to say my health is my wealth. It's almost like, cause you know, if you could be a billionaire, but if you're not healthy, you know, you got cancer, cares, you know, right. what good is all your money? But my thing is you can be, you could be a aerobics instructor and all of a sudden you end up in the emergency room and you have no health insurance. And you know, now you, you, you're in debt. You could have been the healthiest person in the hospital. But give, what does that health get you at that point? I'll give you a scary. So I want people, I want people to start thinking, not just my health is my wealth again, which is a catchy phrase, but I want people to start thinking my wealth is my freedom. Mm. My wealth is my freedom, my independence to whereas it gives me more options, give me more choices. People are stressed to the tilt right now. Mm -hmm. And nobody's talking about that. They're not talking about doing like during the pandemic that a lot of people exhausted their, their retirement funds mm -hmm. just to keep a roof over their head. Mm -hmm. So now that money for retirement is not there. I'll give you and, another scary example. I'll give you one more scary example. I just, go ahead. cause like you're on a roll. I don't want to stop you, but, but I just, we do shows here all day long that uh, we stream out of the University of California Irvine Applied Innovation. We get all this cutting edge stuff we talk about here all day long, like your show. And we had somebody on from the Global Alzheimer's Foundation. Now, let's take a second to set this up. Hmm. For 20 okay. years, they've had no treatment, no way to help you if you got Alzheimer's. Uh, in Orange County, it's the third leading cause of death. People don't realize it's really devastating. My mother had Alzheimer's. Hmm. Um, FDA approved a drug. That was all over the news. First time in 20 years. May not help everybody, may just slow it down, but first time they've ever had anything. Hooray, the whole show right. is about this. Here's Heard the catch that. though. Here's the catch. It's probably not gonna be covered under insurance because it doesn't help everybody. And you gotta have a certain type. So the company's gonna say, we're not gonna pay for everybody to get this because it only helps a relatively small group of people. You gotta have a certain exactly. DNA markers and stuff. So the right now, it doesn't pay. So we say, okay, all right, what's it cost to get the drug for one year? $56,000 a year. And I went, well, what good is that? You might as well not even put it out. You've got a drug Paul, that can help my mother survive, but I can't pay for it. Paul, if you have the money, that's not even a decision. That's what I'm saying. So they're going to more and more. <laughs> Think about this. I answer this. I, I really foresee a future. I don't want to sound too doom and gloom, but in our lifetime, maybe our kid's lifetime, where people with wealth not only will live happier, longer lives, they'll live to be 100 and the rest of us will die at 50 or 60, not because we lived a worse life, because we couldn't afford the, the cure. We couldn't afford the drug or the treatment or the program that would extend our life. So you're gonna see rich people living on and poorer people dying off. That's frightening, that's wrong. It's all, it's already happening. In, in my book, Closing the Wealth Gap, I referenced a movie called John Q. Hmm. And that movie is about his, his son uh, needed a heart transplant, but his insurance wouldn't cover it. Yeah. And he went to these, he went, he, I mean, he went to the extreme uh, to, to make sure that that happened. And all of a sudden the uh, public, opinion changed on and everything. He and pulled the gun in the movie and, and he said, I'm not right. backing off and you're going to do this. Right. And... Great movie. But it, but it highlighted based on if you have health care and you can afford the coverage, you live like what you just said. But if you can't, you die. You die. In America. Yeah. So it, this isn't just a question of, of not having a few extra bucks in your pocket to take a vacation or having to work harder. That's part of it. It's not just working paycheck to paycheck. That's even harder. It's a choice between life and death. Do your kids live and the other guy who has wealth, his kids live, your kids die. Think of it that way. It's a, it's the reality that again, I, I, the, the reason this show exists is to get people to a, a, a consciousness level to whereas they're not just thinking about working for money or paying, working to pay bills. They need to set up a system to where they have, they become, have independent, uh, finance, create financial independence to whereas they have multiple streams of income to whereas these decisions that we're talking about, 
Um, they're just something that, oh, by the way, I need to take care of this. And oh, by the way, I need to take care of that mm -hmm. versus how am I going to pay for this? How am I going to take care of that? And again, the stress levels that people are under right now that, that are struggling financially are through the roof. But here's the difference, what you've shown me. For years, I thought wealth, let's be honest, wealth is just for the wealthy. Wealth is an extraordinary thing, extraordinary effort, extraordinary luck, extraordinary um, smarts. Uh, there's some extraordinary effort maybe, but whatever it is, it's not for ordinary people. Ordinary people, you and me, not you, you're not. Ex you're in the extraordinary class. You've, you've shown that. But the ordinary folks like me, it ain't for me. Oh, because, Paul, and what you've shown is that's a lie that somebody's told you because real wealth starts with ordinary habits, everyday habits, an ordinary simple system that you set up that runs itself, that once you put it in place, produces income and and grows your wealth for you not just good investments Bye. but side businesses other sorts of things putting your money to work and say so you're working for money all the stuff you talk about it really comes down to you you're saying ordinary people can have everyday wealth uh, that's mind-boggling and it, it by job i think he's got it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. took me a while but... because that because we say the same thing on this show pretty much uh, every time we have an episode, as far as it's a it's a process, it's, it's it's a daily routine, but you have to have that consciousness. You have to be thinking about it. Um, let me give you an example. If if you wanted to say, okay, I want to have, I want to save uh, five hundred dollars. Well, let, let let let's say I want to at the end of the month again. You've been paying, you've been working payday to payday. Uh, you can't possibly see where you're going to save uh, any extra money. So let's say, okay, I want to save $100 this month. Mm -hmm. And for, for me to save $100 this month, I need to save $25 a week. For me to save $25 a week, and let's say if um, uh, I'm working five days a week, I need to save $5 a day, $5 a day. So all I have to do is look at my budget or look at my routines, meaning going to the cafeteria and and uh, order and take out, let's say, you know, I decide to to make a sandwich, you know, or whatever it is, whatever you s decide to do to, to where you find that five bucks. And now you're doing that every single day. You find out you find the $25 a week. All of a sudden you, at the end of the month, you have that hundred dollars. But what you did was you cut back. You decided you wanted to cut back in order to save X amount of dollars. My point is what you want to do is try to figure out how you can add more value and more service. I get it. The analogy to where you can make an extra five dollars. The perfect day. example was the example you came up with a few years, weeks ago. We came up with about the the um, guy who bags your groceries, the lowest job at the supermarket, a fixed a minimum wage, minimum amount of money he makes has no control over it. It's a robotic job. There's nothing I can do to make more out of that job to add value. Except you said, how about if he walks out to the car with you and gets a tip? There's your five bucks. Right, right. And Paul, your audio just, just cut out a minute. Again, okay. what what I'm looking at, and maybe it's not yours, maybe it's mine. Yeah, yours is cutting um, in and out so, of here a little bit. Okay. Um, but again, the, the point was, uh, it was a true example because I used to work for Boys Market many years, many, many moons ago. Remember Boys Market? Yeah, sure. Boys Market, yeah. And I was a bagger, and they were going to pay me so much money an hour, and you know, you got paid every two weeks. And I just realized, hey, look, you know, uh, I'm bagging a person's stuff. I'm just going to take it out to the car, and I got a tip, a dollar, two dollars. And if I did that four times an hour, I got eight bucks. And so I didn't have to wait for my paycheck. I walked home with money, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, give me another example. Again, in my younger younger days, um, I would drive around sometime and I would see, um, you know, people's driveways and I would see the oil in the driveway. And so I decided, hey, look, you know, I'm sure they'd want to have that oil cleaned up in their driveway. So I would knock on the door a business card and say, you love Tyrone French driveway, et cetera. I see you got this all in your driveway. I'd love to take it up for you. 
get it out for you. You know, you know what? With almost without fail, they would say, you know what? I was just thinking about that. And so what I would do is I would take the take the the solution, put it down, put, take their water hose. I had a little hand edger, and I would edge the side of the driveway, and I would sweep up the grass, and I would do all this stuff while the solvent was doing his job. And I would take their water hose, put it on a, a nozzle, my own nozzle, a high velocity nozzle, spray it out. And they came outside, all the oil was gone in their driveway. The grass was manicured on the side. I made 15 bucks for doing that. It took me all of maybe 15 minutes to do. Years and years ago, you know the silly example you may, you remind me of. Um, I live in a typical tract house here in South Orange County. Nice house, but small house. And Saturday afternoon, guy comes to the door, nice looking guy. And about my age, and he says, hey, Sorry to interrupt you here. Um, I lost my job recently trying to find a way to make some extra money. Got an idea for you here. That uh, people have old doorbells, little buttons you push to ring the doorbell. They're old. They're 20 yes. years old in these houses. Yes. I got yes. a little box of them here, some cool ones. One's a son. One's a dolphin. One's a cat. One's a something here. I'm charging 25 bucks and changing these out. It takes me five minutes, 25 bucks. You get the little thing. I'll put it in for you. I'm here. Boom. Yes. And I went, Yes. Yeah, let's do it. And I gave him 25 yes. bucks and he put it in. I've always loved it since. How many did he do in that neighborhood that day? Exactly. 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 Even even um, uh, the address on the curb. Address on the curb. Another one you know, that come by. Yeah, right. Yeah, you gotta knock on the door. Hey, you know, I see your address on the on the curb is fading, and I can go ahead and spray that for you. Oh yeah, please go ahead and do that. Five bucks, ten bucks. How many of those can you do in an hour, Paul? Yeah. So I'm I'm just saying. But that's just so many that's creative the everyday things. Effort, but but see, then I'm thinking, okay, that's extra. You got to be extraordinarily. You got to be clever. You got to be extraordinarily hardworking. I'm lazy. You got to be extraordinarily uh, smart to see those things. Not so. It's just a mind shift. And and you're stuck. Not, we're stuck in this shift that says oh, can't. So I'll give you another example, and then I'll shut up for a second. I have a. I got a seven-year-old grandson. I'm trying to teach him how to swim and ride a bike and all this stuff. And all I hear is when he starts is, Grandpa, I can't. Grandpa, I can't. I said, take that word out of your vocabulary. Right. Every time you say you can't, you're right. You can't. Yeah, you know, but the minute and yeah, then and then absolutely he absolutely right. Then he does it and he swims five feet or he rides five uh, twenty feet. And I said, yes. Well, see, it's all up yes. here. It starts up here yes. in your head first. Yes. It was easier than he, than he thought it was. And again, that's just human nature. Yeah. You know, we, it's that fear, you know, if, once you get, once you develop the emotion that you, you, you know, you drive past that fear and you realize that that was your limitation that you placed on yourself, then a whole new world opens up, but you know, you got to get past that point. I'm gonna give you another example. Mm -hmm. uh, my barber, uh, mm -hmm. who, who is a, a, a beautician. She does uh, braids and all kinds of stuff. Matter of fact, she loses money by cutting my hair because she'll make so much more money by doing braids and all this other right. stuff. But she cuts men's hair right. and she's very, very good at it. But at the same time, uh, she loves to cook. She loves having desserts and stuff. So she has this um, a banana pudding. And man, you know, it, it's, it's banana. It's some of the best. And I, mom, I love you. I, I, if you hear this podcast, <laughs> mom, sorry. you know, I'm against you. But she makes some of the best banana pudding in the world. And when mm. I go in there, and it, and she, it, she, I mean, it's not just you, she takes a uh, have a plate and she takes a big old spoon and just dump it on your plate. No, it's packaged well. Mm -hmm. It has the, the 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 labels on it, the sticker on it. Uh, it's very professional. And you you could be sitting there waiting to get your hair done or whatever, get a haircut, and people are sitting in their shop because she has these. Uh, cookies and cakes and banana puddings and stuff and then people say well this is great i want you to cater this i want you to... and so she's out she's making money mm -hmm. she's increasing her her bottom line just by doing what she loves mm -hmm. so what i would recommend to, to a lot of people and again this is something that, that that donald trump said a lot of things he'll say he said that i don't agree with but there's a couple <laughs> of things that he said that i absolutely agree with and he tells people do what you love do what you love, because if you do that, you will never work another day there in you go. your life. There you go. Well said. Well said. Well, the, the transformation, though, is 
to believe, to hear, hear it first and then believe it, that you, Mr. and Mrs. Ordinary Listener right now, you, ordinary folks out there like me, can do some ordinary things and produce some extraordinary results. It's not the other way around. It doesn't it's, take extraordinary luck, brains, effort to make an ordinary income. It takes ordinary habits. It takes effort and imagination, but it's a habit. If you do it over and over again, it ain't hard. I'll give you another example. When I was- uh, Well, Tim Paul, I'll tell you, it, it's a routine. And here's the thing. I want people to understand, it's like even with spending money. Spending money is, uh, some people have the habit of spending money. That's, that's their routine. Right. And it's hard for them to break that habit. Right. The issue is, I don't want them to stop spending money. What I want them to stop doing is spending things that don't add value. Right. There you go. It does, that don't add value. Because Waste. once you get to the point where you understand creating wealth, I mean, ordinary wealth for every day people, meaning that you get into that routine. And you have to know what you want as far as that this is my goal. And so once you establish that goal and you begin, uh, Napoleon Hill calls it auto suggestion. First, you can receive suggestions from everywhere. Or, But once you start making suggestions to yourself and you, you get to the point where that dialogue in your head is that you're going to create wealth, you're going to um, uh, make sure that you have multiple streams of income. Now you have this conscience level to whereas you began to see opportunities that were there all along that you just didn't take advantage of. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the point. You have to change the way we think. And you change the way you think. Um, the, the faith will overcome that fear. You'll begin to believe it. And then once you believe it, you and you speak in it, you'll begin to act on it. Once you begin to act on it, you'll be you'll begin to see the manifestations in your life. You know, and there's so many. Uh, I grew up around so many fundamentalist Christians. Uh, I'm a good uh, church-going boy myself, but uh, I always heard people talk about the Bible. They'd say, "I said, why do you believe that?" He he said it. I read it. That's it. <laughs> if it was that simple in the rest of her life, it's just that simple. Tyrone just said it. I heard just it. Just that simple. Yeah, I don't get it. Hey, how do we simply get your book? Because that's we got to get this book in more people's hands. People are going to sit bitch and moan. They can't pay the 10 bucks, 20 bucks, whatever it costs here. Is there any other way you can get the book? You can get. You can literally get my book for free. What? I, I, I'm, you know, I'm going to give my book away for free. The, the only thing I want you to do is you can pay the shipping and handling on the book, but it's free. But also... I'll give you my book for free if you download my app. How much and is the app? The how, much is, hand, how much is the app? The app is free. The app is free. So if I do the one free thing, free. I get an extra the free bonus? Free. I, I take one, one free step, download the app, and I get a free bonus. I get a book you, you, on top of it. You get a free book. You get a free book. You know what else they get? And, and What's that? They get they, access. They get free access to you and all the, your information in this show and everywhere. Yeah. And Paul, we're on the same wavelength because that just can't it just came to mind. It's having the access to getting this information to have this in your consciousness to where now you're thinking about it. Yeah. And you're not worrying about the outcome because you understand that the activity is going to produce the result that you're looking for. Right. Somebody when I much so. smarter than me said, You are who you hang around with. You know, you hang around with the bad kids in school, bad things happen. You hang around the good kids in school, good things happen. Uh, take that to heart. If you hang around uh, long enough and listen to this stuff from Tyrone, from other shows, from this, you start to absorb it. You start to become it. So, Paul, what I want my listeners to do is just take out your phone and text Ordinary Wealth to 36260. One more. Ordinary Wealth to 36260 download that app register you know put your name on there put your uh, your phone number on there and again request my free book which is closing the wealth gap uh, all i'm asking you to do is just pay the shipping and handling on the book and we'll start a dialogue and again don't just look at this for yourself look at look at it for your kids look at it for your grandkids because 
the name of the game is generational wealth. Right. It's and it begins with us. I can't add anything to that. It's that simple, isn't it? It's get just that simple. A free step, a 30 second step to get a free app gives you a world uh, entry into a new world, a new way of thinking. And as a bonus, you're even going to give them a free book that they can read to get started and a free show they can tune into each and every week. What holds us back? We don't believe it. Ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. I believe let's what you're it. saying is true, let's but make, I don't believe I can do it. Let's make it happen. All right. I love it. Take us out. Anything else we got to add this week here? Anything Call else? Call again. We just, you know, we we find ourselves in the same position, you know, year in and year out, but it happens one day at a time, one step at a time. And, and there's, there's no reason to waste those days anymore. Yeah. And, and we've all had the experience in life. I certainly have. I would bear, bet everybody has where he kept saying, I know, I know I got to do this. I got to do that. I should do this. I'm going to do this. And then something happens and you wake up and you go, oh, I guess I really should pay attention to my wife before she divorces me. Oh, I guess I should uh, have some money in the bank to pay for these emergencies. Oh, I guess I really should, uh, uh, you know, uh, brush my teeth before my teeth fall out. You know, something happens and you wake up and you say, man, what was I thinking? You know, that reminds me of, um, out of the great Jim Rohn. He said that um, he was talking about, uh, he had heard a story about this guy, you know, he didn't like flossing his teeth. <laughs> he said, and the dentist just got tired of telling him, he said, don't worry about flossing your teeth. Just floss the ones that you want to keep. <laughs> <laughs> You know, don't worry about the rest. Don't worry about just, the rest. Just the ones that you want to keep. That's perfect. All right. Well, I want to keep coming back. I want people to keep coming back. So give us give us the thought for today. What's the step for the day? All that stuff here. I want people to think about, you know, what wealth really is. Ordinary wealth. Ordinary steps that you take for everyday people. It's not extraordinary people. It's not, not extraordinary steps or extraordinary steps. It's just common sense, mundane things that people do on a daily basis, begin to manifest and begin to multiply and just focus on, you know, you, know, you got to get to the point where you just cannot, and this is just, just my belief. Uh, I can't see myself. I couldn't see myself working for money, getting time for money for the rest of my life until I'm 60, 70, 80 years old, because eventually that formula is going to fail. Mm -hmm. And you might, you might find yourself in a position or having a lifestyle that you just didn't want. And so you can choose your lifestyle. You can choose, uh, you know, how you want to live and a quality of life, but it takes action. It takes an action step to make that happen. And as a, as your coach, I am willing to give you the information uh, to help you do that, along with your support and cash, your 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 team that you're putting in place. Um, but I'm here to coach you and help you to get to the from point A uh, to point B. So how do they reach you? Again, I want you to download my app. Just text. Uh, you can text Ordinary Wealth to three six two six zero. Ordinary Wealth. Text Ordinary Wealth to three six two six zero. All right, that's going to finish us up for today here. Thank you so much. It start, the journey of a thousand miles starts with a sing, single step. Single step. Yes, sir. That's our show for this week. Closing the Wealth Gap. The one show, the only show that shows you how to take control of your financial future. Right here in Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio. Dot net.